Hey everyone, Julian here for The Financial Diet and this is The Test Lab, a video series where we take on different money making or money saving challenges to try to help us live a better, more budget friendly lifestyle. And in today's video, I get to channel my inner hype beast as I am making it my mission to see how much money I can earn by reselling my clothes. Pretty simple, right? But here's the kicker. I'm going to try to resell my winter clothes in the middle of a New York City summer. You see, I live here in Brooklyn and it is no secret that the city at large got hit very hard by the pandemic over the past year. Uh, but with the streets reopening, what better time is there to reinvent my personal style so this challenge is coming at the perfect time. But me being the opportunist that I am, I am not gonna let my clothes go without a fight. My goal during this challenge is to make at least $500 from reselling my winter clothes. And that $500 can be in the form of cold hard cash, store credit, or tax credits for charitable deductions. As for the methods that I'm gonna to use to resell my clothes, I'm going to just stick to the classic in-person brick and mortar reselling at local vintage shops, thrift stores, or clothing donation centers. I'm coming into this challenge pretty confident in my personal style. Eh, eh. So hopefully I won't have to resort to online selling uh, to try to resell my clothes. While that is definitely a great, more accessible way of reselling your clothes and reaching out to you know, a wider audience, it requires a heavy lift from photographing your clothes to uh, signing up for different platforms and shipping and a whole lot of logistics. And I don't have time for that. I'm very impatient. Time is money, so let's go ahead and begin this whole process by gathering up the clothes that I am ready to part ways with. I began this week-long process by doing my laundry. It's definitely a chore that I always procrastinate doing, so I had a mountain of dirty clothes to deal with. When reselling your clothes, I think it's important to clean all the clothes you intend to resell because one, that's nasty if you don't, and two, getting out any odors and stains will help increase the value of your items. With that said, I went ahead and used an unscented laundry detergent made for sensitive skin because you don't know who is going to buy your clothes and what allergies and skin reactions they might have to your usual scented detergent. After four trips to the laundromat, I finally had all of my clothes so fresh and so clean, but now it was time to fold and fold and fold. Next, I channeled my inner Marie Kondo and got to organizing. I separated the bottoms that I want to resell from the tops and outerwear and accessories. I then placed each of these categories in their own individual garment bag and labeled each cube with what was inside with my name and phone number on the label as well. Doing all of these extra steps shows the buyer at the resale stores that you care about your clothes and that you also care about their time, which could help increase the value that they are willing to pay for your clothes in my opinion. Whew. Okay friends, we are back in my bedroom, you know, where all the magic happens. Do the kids still say that? Anywho, after three long days, seven loads of laundry, and 21 pairs of clean underwear, I am proud to say that I finally washed every single piece of my clothing that needed it. Uh, so with that said, for all of the clothes that I am deciding to keep that happen to be out of season, I just tossed them in a plastic storage cube and chucked them under my bed. Now, as for the clothes that I am deciding to finally say my goodbyes to and part ways with, I went ahead and channeled my inner Virgo moon and went to organizing. Okay, so I uh, decided to separate my clothes versus uh, sweaters and hoodies from bottoms, which includes like jeans and uh, work pants uh, versus outerwear and even t-shirts. Now I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I'm a Leo son, so I like things looking picture perfect. Uh, but the second reason is actually quite logical. So when selling clothes to secondhand shops, I think it's best to make the buyer's job as easy as possible. Um, so again, I went ahead and separated my clothes and neatly folded them. I even labeled the storage cubes uh, just with what it is and my name and my phone number just so that they can easily 
usually contact me if needed. It shows that you respect their time, you respect their job, and part of me wants to think by you doing that, they're going to give you a higher rate for your clothes. Yeah? Also, while doing this whole process of like cleaning out my closet and tossing the clothes that I don't, you know, really wear anymore, I have kind of used that as a springboard to really summer clean uh, my apartment and do a lot of DIY projects that I have been putting off. Uh, it is a really good time once you actually like declutter to kind of just like go full out and declutter your entire home. Uh, so if you're interested in more of DIY projects around my Brooklyn bachelor pad, definitely make sure you follow me across my personal channel so you can keep up with all the exciting projects that I'm working on. But anywho, uh, I do think that I am ready to head down to some of my uh, favorite secondhand shops to see how much I can make from selling my winter clothes. Now, before I head down, I went ahead and called these shops just to see what season that they're buying. Are you guys buying winter right now? Okay, thank you. Um, I think that is important only because, especially here in New York, real estate is valuable, which means storage is very hard to come by. So a lot of these shops do not have the space to keep you know, clothes for all the seasons throughout the year on hand. So definitely make sure you call ahead just so you can see what season uh, individual shops are buying in. Uh, fortunately, I'm a dude, so I do think that it might be a little easier uh, selling clothes uh, or selling my winter clothes only because as a guy, like, we're kind of boring. We don't have a lot of options to choose from or summer clothes is usually just t-shirts and, and shorts. Uh, so, you know, I think men's fashion really comes alive when it gets cold where we can throw on jackets and sweaters and hoodies. So hopefully that might work in my favor. Um, and also, uh, before I head down, I definitely think that there is a, a checklist that you should uh, keep in mind. First of all, arrive early with the pandemic and you know social distancing rules. You don't know folks' policy, so definitely come prepared with a mask and be prepared to wait. Um, it's hard out here. People are struggling, so everyone, you know, a lot of people might be in the mood to sell their clothes and make some extra cash. So uh, leave your home early, arrive early to give yourself enough time. So just in case you have to wait, and bring snacks. You know, again, I don't know how long I'm going to be waiting there for. Uh, with that said, I do know that a lot of stores prefer for you to drop off your clothes and then they'll call you when it's ready to be picked up and they'll let you know what they're willing to accept and, you know, what they're not. Uh, so prepare for that as well. You don't know. So prepare yourself. Give yourself ample time to for all possibilities. Let's go see how much money I can make. Before I left my apartment, I gathered any remaining clothes that I want to resell and some essentials such as my mask. And as you can see, I struggled carrying everything down to the car. I live in North Brooklyn, which is a promised land of thrift stores and vintage shops. So I did not have to travel far to the first location. So welcome to Beacon's Closet. Okay, you guys, so I just dropped off all those clothes uh, at Beacon's Closet, which is a pretty popular uh, secondhand clothing store in Brooklyn. They have a few locations, I believe, um, both in Brooklyn and in Manhattan. So I just dropped off at the Bushwick East Williamsburg location. And uh, as you can see, they have a pretty tight store policy when it comes to both shopping and selling your clothes. So again, uh, definitely make sure you uh, call beforehand and just do your research so you come prepared and I'm glad I did. Uh, I actually came on a weekday so there was no line. I actually live uh, not too far from here. So I, you know, I'm over here all the, all the time, including weekends and usually on the weekends that line is wrapped around the block. So I was very thrilled that there was no line and I was in and out in less than five minutes. They asked for my uh, state ID, had to give them my phone number, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the staff was pretty nice and I can tell that they were very uh, happy that I folded and neatly organized all my clothes. Um, so hopefully that will encourage them to buy um, more than usual i guess uh so we'll see they told me uh i can come back in 45 minutes they'll send me a text when they've you know gone through all my stuff so i'm actually going to walk around the neighborhood go to some of my favorite shops spend money that i don't have and uh 
I'll check in in 45 minutes to see what it's looking like. Okay, you guys, so it's been about an hour and a half, two hours. I've been walking around the neighborhood, went to some of my favorite shops, visited some friends, went to one of my favorite bars. So if I look like I'm feeling nice, that's why. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just got a text that my clothes are you know ready for pickup so which clearly means that they didn't take everything uh but it was really interesting because within the text message letting me know that everything is ready for pickup or that they're done with reviewing everything they actually told me uh the price that they would be willing to give me for uh the items that i'm willing to resell and it is 62 dollars if i want cash i think it's like 130 if i want store credit and it looks like they just closed oh no they're still okay i'm going to be honest and say that if i can give the store credit to a friend then i will take the store credit because it's a higher value and i have a lot of friends who love to shop vintage especially at a place like beacons which is pretty popular here in new york um so I'm about to go in and pick it up and see exactly what the terms are. Um, if you are doing something like this, again, I definitely recommend uh, checking what the terms are. And um, yeah, let's see what we can do. As you can see, quite a bit, whoa, quite a bit is left over. A very humbling experience. Apparently I don't have as much, as much towel as I thought I did, um, but um, when I went to go pick them up, they said that I can't like extend the store credit offer to somebody else, which yeah, they need to change that policy. Like, you know, maybe put it on like a gift card and I can give it to somebody else. You know, I'm not really on the hunt for more clothes right now. Uh, so I just opted for the cash. It was $62. But anyway, I just called it Uber because I have an appointment at six o'clock for another uh, place to, you know, try to sell whatever is left over so let's go see what we can do now off to the williamsburg neighborhood in north brooklyn to see what i can resell at location number two greetings from buffalo exchange okay you guys quick note if you're going to take your clothes from shop to shop make sure you get rid of all evidence from the previous shop because i'm sure they will like that Okay guys, so I just left having a quick slice of pizza and another margarita. Um, and I am making my way back to Buffalo Exchange to see how much they are willing to accept my clothes for. Unlike the last place, they don't send you a text when your clothes are ready for pickup, which obviously means I can't, I don't, I don't know how much they are willing to give me um, before I get there. So I can't really make that decision. I, I am assuming I will have to make that decision on the fly, um, but we will see. You guys guess what? I, I I sold most of my clothes. Look at this. My bags are empty. Uh, you saw when I left the last spot, it was just completely full. I felt low key humiliated. Like, oh, I guess I don't have any style, but apparently these guys at Buffalo Exchange they think different because they took most of my stuff. How dope is that? Um, so I actually decided to get the store credit and they put it on this nifty car uh, that I can easily pass along to somebody unlike the last one I went to, which is very exciting. So uh, I can either give this to a friend or if a friend knows somebody that's in need, they can easily take this card and go and buy some, some clothes. Um, but the, the balance is $378. Uh, I'm really bad at math, but that plus the $62 cash I got, that's for something, I don't know. So I'm gonna go home uh, and actually I'm gonna go home, then get dressed, then go out, and I will check in tomorrow with the final total and results of everything. And yeah, I'm just really excited, so uh, yeah. Across the two stores, I brought approximately 50 items of clothing and accessories to resell. In fact, 50 was the maximum limit you could attempt to resell at both locations. Neither location provided an itemized list of what clothing they accepted. 
but judging by the amount of clothes I had left over after leaving Beacon's closet, I'd say they took maybe five pieces. As for Buffalo Exchange, judging by the two t-shirts and three ties I had left over, I'd say they accepted about 40 pieces of my clothing. As for the clothing that I resold, it was mostly outerwear and pants that no longer fit my body or my personal style. Some items, especially the coats, were items that I previously bought at other thrift and vintage stores throughout the years. I'm proud to say that I hold onto my clothes for as long as possible. Most of the items that I resold on this mission were well over three years old. I noticed that both Beacons and Buffalo gravitated to more well-known retail brands that I was trying to offload. Adidas and Uniqlo being the top two. I'm a pretty frugal guy, so none of the clothes that I resold cost me much in retail. I'd say the most expensive item that I resold was a $200 jacket I bought three years ago. So as you can see, I am ending this challenge with a very big smile on my face because I have the weight of my heavy winter coat finally lifted off of my shoulders. There is no better feeling of having finally gotten rid of something that has been taking up so much space in your life, both literally and figuratively. All jokes aside, I'm sure I'm not speaking just for myself when I say that the past year and a half has been really weird and very stressful and it feels really good to, you know, shift memories of, of that time out of my life, even if they are closed. I don't know, I just feel like I'm starting maybe a new chapter and I feel damn good about it. But even better, I made some money while doing it. So I ran the numbers and from the first shop that I went to, I made a grand total of $62 in cold hard cash. Now I could have made $103.33 if I opted for the store credit, but that particular shop that I went to wouldn't allow for me to transfer the credit to somebody else. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys and say I'm not really the the secondhand clothing kind of guy is just not my personal style. Uh, so I would have wanted to give that credit to someone else rather than me using it and getting something that I would probably never wear again, just taking up more space. Uh, so that store wouldn't allow me to do that. So I just opted for the cash. However, with the second store that I went to, I made a grand total of $378 in store credit. <laughs> crazy right now it would have been $94.50 in cash if I opted for that buyout option uh, however that store in particular allows for you to transfer the store credit to someone else they actually put it on eh, eh. they put it on a little gift card and the gift card never expires and uh, they have multiple locations throughout the country so I can give this to a friend or you know donate it to a charity or a neighbor in need uh so i'm definitely going to think very hard as to how i can put this car to use and to better somebody else uh again because i don't personally have a need for it all in all i made a grand total of 440 dollars from selling my winter clothes in the middle of summer now yes i did come up 60 dollars short of reaching my goal however Having decluttered my space and about to help somebody in need, that definitely makes up for the difference, for sure. The most challenging part of this challenge was honestly just getting started. Uh, as you can see at the start of the challenge, I had a lot of laundry to do. I wanted to make sure that the clothes that I was reselling uh, smelled good, that they were clean, and I procrastinate doing laundry. It is a chore. Uh, so it took me about four days to wash all of my clothes, uh, just so I can make sure I wanted to get rid of everything that I was not wearing anymore. And again, that it was in the best condition that it could be in. And that took a lot of work. However, you know, with me doing all of that laundry, it kind of sparked, you know, more motivation in me to do other chores around my house. So I was able to knock out a lot at one time. And I am very proud of that. As for the biggest lesson that I learned is something that I kind of already knew and that is just the business and the economics of clothing and retail. Uh, I come from a corporate retail background. Uh, my first job uh, was at 16 as a retail associate at a skate shop in Northern Virginia. 
at an outlet mall. And uh, when I moved to New York for college, I actually interned uh, at the corporate level for that same company. And that internship turned into a, a full-time salary job uh, doing PR for that company. And doing that, I've learned so much about retail and how the business side of that works. And I was able to put all of those lessons that I've learned throughout the years to use now, which was very exciting from, you know, knowing what buyers would want to see, how to build that relationship. Uh, again, just how the concept of clothing in retail works. Uh, one thing I think would be very interesting to do uh, for a next challenge is to see how much money I can make from selling my clothes online. It's no secret that the way we shop, it is definitely changing with e-commerce, direct to consumer brands, and all these social media platforms, integrating shopping capabilities. The landscape is changing very, very fast and is much more accessible for a lot of people. I think a really good challenge would be to replicate this experience, but from a digital lens. I'm talking take photography, create content, build profiles on these digital platforms for reselling your clothing and market it like a true business and really see how much money you can make doing that. Uh, again, that is definitely going to take some time and requires a lot more logistics, but I think that the return would be much more valuable in my opinion. So if that's a video you want to see, definitely let us know by dropping a comment below. Again, I'm Julian Thomas with The Financial Diet, and this was The Test Lab. I hope to see you all in our next episode. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, let us know what challenges we should take on next by leaving a comment below. And until then, peace.